The iPad Pro is no longer just a tablet. It hasn't been for a long time. With every generation, Apple quietly transforms it, step by step, into something closer to a true laptop or maybe something even beyond that. And now, with the upcoming 2025 iPad Pro powered by the all-new M5 chip, the transformation continues. This isn't a simple spec bump. Apple isn't just tossing in a faster chip and calling it a day. What we're seeing with the 2025 iPad Pro is a real evolution. It's a culmination of years of slow, calculated upgrades. And this year, that slow evolution might just take a major leap forward. Let's take a step back for a second. In 2024, Apple introduced the M4 iPad Pro. That device was a marvel. Thinner than anything Apple had ever made. Just 5.1 millimeters thick for the larger model. It came with a breathtaking old display what Apple called Tandem Old, and it was fast. The M4 chip inside made it feel nearly as fast as a MacBook. But now, just a year later, Apple is preparing to outdo itself again. The new iPad Pro will be powered by the M5 chip, and that alone tells us a lot. Based on Apple's previous upgrades, we can reasonably expect a new 10-core CPU and a major GPU boost possibly even a 12-core GPU for those who care about video editing, 3D modeling, or advanced design work, this will matter. Apple is clearly positioning the iPad Pro as a tool, not just for watching content, but for making it. But before we go too far into what's coming, let's rewind and look at where we are. The current iPad Pro already runs circles around most tablets. The M4 gave it raw performance, excellent battery life, and advanced cooling that makes heat issues almost non-existent. It also brought iPad Doze 17 and support for the beta version of iPad Doze 18, now officially known as iPad Doze 26. This new OS introduced things iPad users had been begging for. Better multitasking, smarter window management, and more intuitive file handling. On top of that, apps like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and even development tools have gotten serious updates to take full advantage of Apple Silicon. This is a device meant for work, not just consumption. Now, let's talk about what the M5 will bring to the table. While Apple hasn't officially confirmed specs, leaks suggest we'll see a significant jump in GPU cores up to 12, compared to 10 in the M2 and M3 chips. That means smoother rendering, faster exports, and better real-time graphics. Whether you're editing 4K video, designing in 3D, or playing advanced mobile games, the difference will be noticeable. CPU-wise, a 10-core layout is expected, offering both performance and efficiency improvements. This matters not just for speed, but for battery life too. With a more efficient chip, the iPad Pro could run longer while staying cooler and that's crucial for a portable device. This thin dot RAM is another area where Apple might finally give users what they've wanted for years. Right now, base models still start with 8GB of unified memory. That's fine for most users, but for heavy multitaskers and creatives working with large files, it's a bottleneck. In 2025, Apple may finally bump the base RAM to 16GB across all models, with optional Upgrades to 24 gigabytes on higher tier config. That's desktop level memory in a tablet now. Let's talk about that display. Apple isn't likely to change the form factor too much, but the screen itself is expected to grow slightly. Rumors point to new sizes, 11.5 inches and 13.5 inches. This isn't a radical change in size. Instead, Apple is reportedly shrinking the bezels even more allowing for a larger screen in the same body. You get more canvas, more room to work, and a more immersive experience without increasing the physical footprint. And of course, OLED is here to stay. The tandem old tech introduced with the M4 model offered stunning contrast, deep blacks, and vibrant colors. It's already one of the best displays on any portable device, and it's not going anywhere. Apple may refine the brightness and efficiency even more in the M5 version. But we're already close to perfection. What about the software side? That's where things get really interesting. iPad DOS 26 
builds directly on the foundation laid by earlier versions, the biggest focus, making the iPad Pro feel like a real computer. Apple has slowly been adding features like Stage Manager, better files integration, external display support, and full app multitasking. Now, with iPad DOS 26, those features are maturing. Windowed apps feel smoother. Drag and drop between apps is more intuitive. And desktop class apps are better optimized for touch and pencil input. Apps like Logic Pro now work seamlessly with m to touch. Video editors can edit in Final Cut with a tap, drag, and swipe something that would have felt clunky just a few. Years ago, developers can run terminals and code in Swift. Musicians can hook up MIDI devices and record directly into her quality. Doors. The line between iPadOS and macOS is shrinking. And that's the point. Apple doesn't want to turn the iPad into a Mac, but it wants to give you Mac level power in a different form. One that's more portable, more flexible, and more versatile. Now let's talk design. The M for iPad Pro was already incredibly thin. Apple isn't likely to push much further in terms of thickness. Simply because going thinner brings risks especially with battery life and durability. Instead, the M5 model is expected to maintain the same ultra-thin body. 5.3mm for the smaller version and 5.1mm for the larger. The chassis will likely be made of aluminum. With the same squared edges and premium finish, expect small refinements, lighter weight, or better durability, but don't expect a full redesign. This is Apple we're talking about. They evolve, they don't reinvent. Ports will likely stay the same. USB-C with Thunderbolt support, Face ID up front, and possibly some small camera tweaks. And of course, Apple Pencil and Magic Keyboard support will continue probably with even better magnetic attachment and input response.